up with Reynolds, take one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give me that thing. All right, gang, here, here's the thing. Every question that I answer doesn't just come from me like, I don't like just put my finger in the air and just kind of wonder. I wonder. I wonder. What people are thinking about, it all comes from either the Facebook group or from the comments section or from the live feeds on, on Sundays. It all comes from somewhere where someone was wondering about something, I sit down and think about it for a while and then try and figure out like, what would I say to someone in that particular scenario. One of the things that we've been getting asked a lot lately is what do you do when self-care is not enough? When you're just still tired, when you're still run down, you're at your wit's end, you're not sure what to do next. I just don't know what to do anymore, Michael. I have an answer for you. Today, I wanna to talk about six-ish things that I think you can do to help your social emotional space, even when the school year feels too overwhelming and you're exhausted. Here we go. <laughs> Number one, one of the things I think people think about too much, they're worried that they're not successful today or they're not successful this year. And so one, I would like to entertain the idea that a lot of folks don't take a moment to figure out what success actually is. I am successful, I am powerful, I am handsome, I am happy. Successful, powerful, handsome, happy. What is being successful this year, in this career, in your life? in your day, what does that look like? So what I would say is to have a really clear indicator as to what success is. Write it down, make a list, make some bullet points. So like for every single thing that you have in your list, what are action items underneath that are gonna help you to get there? And then revisit that at the end of the day. I use a habit tracker app that I sit there and literally click the little button whether I did it today or didn't do it today. Did I do affirmations? Did I do, did I meditate? Did I meditate in the afternoon? Did I spend time with my kids? Did I have dog time? Time for what? Dog time is on the habit tracker because it's important to me and I love my dog. Brian, Brian, Brian. Um, this is driving me crazy with these crazy circles. ADD is too much today. The next thing is rest. Thinking about how much rest are you getting? If you're still tired, I just suggest two things. One, either take a nap or get a better night's sleep or be mindful of what you're eating. So eating certain stuff, making sure you have enough vitamin D, making sure that you're eating a cleaner diet. You don't have to go completely overboard and start beating yourself up because you're not eating right. I'll never eat junk food again. But just shifting some of those things is gonna give you more energy, which is gonna make you feel better. Like having a sufficient amount of vitamin D in my diet, even if I have to take a supplement during the winter, it drastically changes how I feel. Conversely, if I take a nap, uh, I just feel better. And the way I do it is just take uncomfortable naps. I sleep on my desk. I sleep on the hard floor. I sleep in a chair instead of on the couch. That was deeply uncomfortable. It's because I feel like it's uncomfortable anyway. And I got rest and now I'm ready to rock. You know, someone told me recently that if we think about like, their example was Jesus, right? So Jesus quite possibly the person that found the most success in the least amount of time or changed the world in the least amount of time ever on planet Earth, he constantly took naps. Yeah, so what? And he walked everywhere. And that idea to me is just so profound because even if you're not religious, it's just like, yeah, it's true, man. I mean, you can't argue. He was always take, like, taking a nap in the boat. He was taking a nap like in the garden. He was like going on retreat and taking naps and like, and he never ran, he never hustled. They weren't like, they hustled to the next village. They just walked there. And I just think that that's interesting uh, because it helps us to slow down. You know, I got the uh, COVID vaccine a few weeks ago and I am still tired. I'm still like not at 100%. And so I've just been letting myself rest more. I'm not hustling and grinding as hard because intuitively I know this is what I need and that's what I give myself. Number three, not just resting, but doing things that rejuvenate you, right? So just chilling and watching a movie, dude, that's, that's fine sometimes. I do it like every once in a while and it's not a bad thing and it's super cool, like have a beer in the afternoon. Only one? Chill and like watch a movie or something like that, it's fine. But I find that what really like picks you up 
is actually finding things to do that rejuvenate you. So for me, that's playing music, it's spending time in my tiny little wood shop, it is gardening in my yard, it is spending time with my family, like uh, I have really fun cousins, and just being around them just makes, man, it's like, it is like a, like a shot of, of love. It's all about love. It's like mainline and love, and I just love it, and I just hang out with them, and I feel better when I'm done doing it. So it's finding things that rejuvenate you and not just things that are restful. Number four, no one likes this answer, but I'm gonna break it down for you in a way that I think makes sense. It's getting up early. I am so not a morning person. Here's my new thought, see if you can get down with this. Getting up early, as opposed to, to get ready for your day, to set up your day, to prep for your day, instead of staying up late so you can recuperate from your day, is the difference between being on offense versus defense. It's a sports analogy. And so if you've watched my channel, you know that I'm really big on being on offense, but getting up early and getting prepared for your day, your day's not happening to you. You're not getting smacked in the face by your day. You are instead preparing, having a very clear vision of what is happening today, what success means today, and what that will look like today, and then in the rest of your day, just sort of executing and getting things done. And as opposed to having the day beat you up all day and then you have to drink a six pack at night and stay up super late because it was, oh my gosh, today was so exhausting. Oh, what a day. I still get exhausted, but I feel like I can check things off and I can get all that stuff done and then I feel better about my day. Number five, what is your why is something that I talk about a lot, but I have a different way I'm sort of wrestling with this right now. Instead of what is your why, right? A lot of people talk about what is your why. Someone reframed it for me and said, what is it that you're fighting for? And so that to me, it's like getting up early, putting in long hours, taking risks, uh, having difficult conversations, pushing myself to what I think are my limits like in a really good and healthy way. I know why I'm doing it, but if I think about it with regards to what am I fighting for, something about that hits me inside. And I think it's for my kids. Like that's what I do. That's like what everything is for. That is the, my core reason for most of what I do. The other implications are I have religious reasons that I do stuff like spiritual reasons that I do certain things. And then it's students. Education is only ever about the students. So those three things are, what am I fighting for? Something about that really resonates with me. And that's one way that I've reframed it. So instead of like, what is my why? It's what are you, what are you fighting for? That's the question. And number six is to stay focused. Here is how I work on this. I'm gonna make this very, very short and sweet. These, these could all like, literally all of these six things could be like their own video. Uh, and maybe that'll happen at some point. But for me, staying focused is I wake up, I've talked about this before, I use something called the five minute journal. Five minute journal has three things in it each day that I need to get done, that's it. So how do I get done those three things every day? When I wake up, I come downstairs, start coffee, pray, meditate, finish coffee. I then sit down with my five minute journal. I write down the three things that I wanna get done today. And then as soon as I'm done that activity, I literally start working. So I work from let's say seven, 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning until about nine. And I'm only doing things that are on that to-do list. I work for 50 minute increments and take 10 minute breaks so that I can just like get up, take a breath, go outside. I'm very strict about that also. And then I just work for 50 minutes, but 50 minutes of unadulterated like work time. That's all you're doing is just that singular thing. You're not on your phone, you're not checking the news, you're not looking outside to see what that bang was. Did you hear that? You are simply focused on that one thing. You will be wildly surprised at how much you can get done when you have unadulterated in the morning, no one's bothering you, no one's coming to talk to you, nothing's going on. It's you, your coffee, your earbuds, and your work, and that's it it's game changer. So it is really staying focused, but knowing when to be focused. And so I think that that is, that's been a, uh, a big change for me as well. So this was a shortish video. I just wanted to get this out there because I was thinking about it. It's the end of a long day. But if you think that this would help anyone, just send it along, pass it along to someone 
hit the send button. You can just share it on here. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and that little bell notification thing so you get notifications when the videos come up. Uh, and don't forget, if you need anything else from us, you can reach us at realrapwithreynolds.com and there's mentoring there and books and merchandise and anything else that we can think of to help you be the teacher you were called to be. That's it, gang. Peace.